Welcome to this uh, exciting webinar on building digital fluency in organizations. I am incredibly delighted to have uh, three eminent panelists with me. Uh, Ensek Raja from uh, Air Selangor, Malaysia. Uh, Emi Ali, a Director of People and Culture, Roche, Malaysia. And uh, Clayton, uh, who is the GM and Head of uh, Senior GM and uh, Head of OD at the Sunway Group. Uh, thank you panelists for uh, making this time and uh, uh, for willing, uh, being willing to uh, share your insights on this important topic. Thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for your time. And thanks for uh, the uh, participants also for taking this time out for this uh, webinar. Uh, I'll do a quick um, uh, self-introduction before I introduce uh, the panelists. My name is Rajiv Jairaman. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Nolscape. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Nolscape is an experiential learning organization our mission is to help organizations and uh, leaders become future ready through experiential learning, right? And uh, I've had the good fortune of uh, publishing a couple of books uh, on the topic of digital, one called uh, Clearing the Digital Blur, and the other uh, where I contributed as a co-author, uh, Transformational Leadership in Banking, uh, right? I, ever since I've been a big student of this topic, always eager to learn from experts on uh, the topic of digital and what's the impact of digital in organizations. So I'll quickly do a, a round of introduction of our panelists here. Uh, Ensek Raja um, is, uh, 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 was appointed as the head of HR and administration of Air Selangor on 6 February, 2015. He brings over 21 years of experience in HR to the organization. Uh, he holds a bachelor of management in finance and accounting uh, from University Saint Malaysia, Pulau Pinang. That's an interesting switch from finance and accounting into HR and admin. We'll learn more about that later. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, Ensek Raja previously uh, served as a head of talent management in Maybank. And prior to that, he has held various uh, senior positions in multinational organizations um, as the director, senior manager of HR and administration in Adidas. And he's also served as a senior consultant in Deloitte uh, from 1999 to 2001. Uh, real pleasure uh, having you here on this uh, panel, Ensik Raja. Uh, thanks for yeah. taking the time. Pleasure. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Emiya next. Uh, Emiya is the People and Culture Director uh, for Roche Malaysia. Roche is one of the world's leading healthcare uh, organizations, which uh, creates innovative medicines and diagnostic tests that help millions of patients globally. Uh, Emea possesses 23 years of uh, HR management experience. She leads a team of people and culture professionals and is responsible for supporting and implementing the company's strategies to bring Roche uh, purpose to life by unlocking greatness in people and organization. Uh, she's passionate about uh, helping businesses make the most of their resources and helping employees make the most of their strength. Uh, Emea brings with her a uh, significant partnering experience with business through extensive transformation. Uh, she brings learnings uh, from not just having worked and lived in different countries, also worked across different networks. Her level of positive energy and enthusiasm, as you can see from the picture behind her, uh, is very active. Um, right, Her level of positive energy and enthusiasm have continued to build strong relationships across Roche and uh, cultivating new leadership uh, principles to inspire mindsets and behaviors. So incredibly delighted, Emea, to have you on this panel. My pleasure. And uh, Clayton, uh, as I mentioned, is a senior GM and head of OD at the Sunway Group. Uh, he's a dynamic, forward-thinking HR practitioner with close to 20 years of extensive experience in various industries such as management consulting, financial services, FMCG, technology, and construction. Prior to joining Sunway Group in 2021, he has held uh, the uh, he has led the HR teams at uh, Winda Group Southeast Asia Sunway Construction Group, as well as being the learning and OD lead of AIG Malaysia and senior human capital consultant of IG, uh, IBM Global Services. As uh, Sunway's uh, Sunway Group's head of OD, he is responsible for the development of talent and learning experience and to enhance the overall uh, employee experience of the group from branding and attraction to development and growth. He is also tasked to envision the future of work and people practices um, transformation within the group. Thanks for taking this time, uh, Clayton. Happy to have you here. 
Oh, happy to be here. Great. So uh, we'll get started, uh, you know, with a little bit of context setting. And I'll tell you where I'm coming from on this one. Uh, for the last four years, I've been researching on the topic of digital and digital transformation, uh, which led me to write a book a couple of years ago called Clearing the Digital Blur. The first thing that I noticed is when I use the word digital, different people understand it very differently. For a technologist, it is about ones and zeros. It's about the cloud. It's about the mobile app. It's about the automation possibilities. For somebody in marketing, it is about digital marketing and customer journeys. For somebody in HR, it is about a seamless uh, employee experience. So we all look at digital from our own lens, right? And which is why I decided to you know, uh, write something about clearing the blur on, around digital. If we can't understand digital clearly, there is no way we can master it. So that's the context for the first set of questions. Um, here, the topic is digital fluency. Um, so this is for all the panelists. To begin with, how do you define digital fluency? And how do you measure digital fluency in your organization? Maybe we'll uh, start with Nsik Raja first. Okay, thank you, Rajiv, for the introduction. Um, for, for me, uh, I define uh, digital fluency as, as a skill, uh, a very important advanced skill. Uh, it's not a basic skill, but advanced skill uh, required in the business, especially uh, you know the fact that at the speed the technology is advancing now. So it is very important to have this skill. Um, as of now, um, every one of us are, are living in uh, extraordinary times and uh, companies that are digitally connected are seeing lesser dis disruptions. Uh, since most parts um, of the world is stuck at home, uh, upskilling uh, for digital fluency um, is a must uh, for me in any organization. And um, I also think that digital fluency is, is not only for the company. Uh, it will enable uh, the employees to perform uh, their job more effectively. Uh, of course, with some elements of creativity uh, to achieve uh, a certain performance standard set by, uh, by the organization. Um, it is also a skill required for us. Um, us uh, means uh, the organization, um, the people, and also the process uh, to cope up uh, with these ever-changing advanced technologies introduced uh, by the 4IR. Uh, ranging from the big data analytics, um, artificial intelligence uh, to uh, remote sensing. So uh, we are uh, living in extraordinary times and, and this digital uh, influ uh, uh, fluency is very much important to the organization. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, we'll move on to you, uh, Emea. How do you define digital fluency? And is there anything that you're doing to measure this in your organization? Yeah. Okay. Uh, digital fluency for me, uh, basically, is the ability to leverage technology to solve the new challenges. For me, I term it as new challenges, right? It can be a problem, it can whatever. As long as it's a challenge for us, I think how are we going to leverage the technology to help us to solve? So as you are aware, the you know the COVID nineteen pandemic actually has triggered an acceleration of digital transformation, especially is within the healthcare and pharma industry. Right, we are not like Razada or, or Shopee or whatever. We we are healthcare and we govern by compliance. But however, with the COVID pandemic situation, it really triggered us to accelerate the transformation, the digital transformation for our industry. So in Roach, we are using the digital skill index uh, on e-consultancy in measuring the digital fluency currently. So what exactly is the digital skill index? Basically, the digital skill index is designed to help employees to identify their strengths and weaknesses across 14 core topics in digital marketing. So our employees will be able to identify their, their knowledge gaps and the areas of expertise also, they are able to compare themselves uh, you know, to their colleagues and, and peers. They will then receive a recommendation. How could they further 
uh, further learnings and advice on where they should focus on on their efforts on you know really sharpen their skills in that sense right and then they will be able to track progress over time and further analyze their digital capability so this is what currently in Roach we are doing yeah great that sounds good and and e consultancy is a reality today you're not able to meet uh, doctors face to face and so the entire go to market has to be reimagined through digital means yeah great uh, clayton over to you uh, how do you look at digital uh, fluency at the sunway group well um maybe just just begin by the definition of visualizing this that digital is not exclusively for the tech department so if we look at in the past Technology used to be like, yeah, I want to develop something that is tech supported. Let me get IT involved. But today, I think it is looking into familiarity, the comfort in going digital, the awareness that this is already around us. It is not something that I leave for a department to do, but it is something that every department gets involved. It is not outsourced in that manner. So I, I guess that, that allows us to see how fluent a department is and then the individuals. Um, if, if I look another step deeper, I would categorize into four different stages of fluency that we could look into, um, starting with an awareness. So awareness would be like, yeah, I, I'm aware this digital technology is around. This is what the world is evolving. This is what's happening. Now, if I'm aware, am I ready to take the next step? The next step into adapting. Now, I don't mind using it. Um, I do not shun away digital technologies, I will get myself into it. Now then, if we have achieved that, the next step will be embracing it. I enjoy doing it. I want to do it. I want to use technology. Now, adapt and embracing, I see it's where most of us are probably somewhere playing around it. And what's next would be, how do I capitalize it? Allowing the digital familiarity, the fluency of the knowledge of people around me, around my team, to capitalize on digital technology, to make it our competitive advantage compared to the others. Now, we have, I would say, a window of opportunity here because this is where organizations are evolving. So the ones who embrace and capitalize on digital the fastest is likely to get a head start. And it only takes a few years for digital to eventually become a norm that if you don't have it, you are a lagger. So that, that evolution is going to come. Awesome. Thanks for that comprehensive answer. I really like the four levels you spoke about. Awareness, adapting, uh, embracing, and capitalizing. Uh, right? In a way, um, it mirrors the structure of this webinar as well, knowing, um, doing, becoming, and being. Uh, right? So uh, it'll be interesting to hear more um, about your thoughts across all those four segments. Um, now, before we go ahead, I would love to understand what impact does digital fluency have on your business? Uh, Emea mentioned e-consultancy uh, is a big business priority. Um, can you expand on that further? Why digital fluency in your organization? If we choose not to do it right now, what is going to be the impact? Um, okay. I, I believe this question you addressed to me. <laughs> so I, I would say for, for a few years, right, we see an... Um, evolution in our engagement model. So we adding more digital channels, but you know, yes, you can add more digital channels, but mainly is without any integration, right? So, you know, that basically is a uh, very early phase. So omni-channel approach actually is uh, our next uh, very urgent step for us, you know, in the healthcare and the pharma industry. When we talk about omni-channel, basically we talk about how we're going to, you know, like website, you know, online event, email, social media, congress, uh, chatbot, even some of our field force or, you know, uh, uh, web, you know, application, that kind of thing. So for us in broad trying to achieve this, we have to really connect all the channel together and to ensure that we are able to position our stakeholder at the center of our engagement model, I would say. And you know, in Roach, we have a Roach holistic experience that really deliver the right, con what we are trying to get is, we wanted to deliver the right content to the right person in the right place at the right time. 
sometimes you know whatever great things you have but if you deliver at the wrong time or you deliver to the wrong person it just make no sense so you know what we are looking at actually is our platform is able to really talk to each other generate insights and knowledge and leveraging the works that currently our people is doing and how are we going to do that i think that would be important and that's really going to have an impact right uh, on our on our business yeah great um so it sounds like a connected ecosystem around your stakeholders uh, which means that the entire organization to, uh, you know across functions need to be able to speak the same language uh, and do the right thing at the right time, as you mentioned. Um, so that calls for an org-wide capability, not just an IT team getting up to speed, but it's really for everyone to pick this up. Everybody, yes. Sure. And uh, Mr. Raja, what, what does uh, digital mean from an air selling or perspective? Uh, for, for us, um, I think, uh, or as everybody knows, uh, water management has always been uh, a top priority for Malaysians uh, for many years. Um, I slung over everyone's uh, information is responsible for uh, raw water treatment and also distribution of clean and also safe water uh, for over 8.5 million consumers uh, in three states, Selangor, Kuala Lumpur and also Putrajaya. As climate change and uh, rapid development have a direct impact to water availability uh, as well as sustainability. Uh, water operator like uh, AIS Lango, uh, we, we must harness advanced technology to help us developing a secure, sustainable, and also resilient uh, water resources. So uh, for us, uh, digital fluency certainly would help AIS Lango to establish uh, a digital working culture that is very important. Uh, combining the element of people, process, as well as uh, the structure uh, to cope up with uh, new technologies we want to bring into our organization in a way that digital fluency will uh, create um, an employee experience. We are often talk about EX. And not only that, um, the outcome of what we are doing internally uh, will also be able to be translated in how um, our customers experiencing our services. So we, we have a combination of you know, EX at one point and CX at another dimension. That's a great, great point you're making. In fact, MIT um, has done a lot of work around this space. They, in fact, say without EX, CX cannot happen. Without employee experience, customer experience cannot happen. Uh, you, you can patch something together, but it, it's not going to be sustainable. So that's a great point you've made. Um, Clayton, what, what does it mean uh, from the Sunway group? Uh, the fact that you know digital fluency uh, is a must is what you, you're talking about, but what is the business impact of it? Oh, um, let me use the MCO, the, the recent movement controls orders as, as an example. It's not that recent anymore, more than, more than a year actually. So having the digital fluency, infrastructure ready, people readiness actually helps us pretty much in terms of adapting, pivoting, making sure that the business sustainability and continuity continues to happen. Um, take for example, just now it was mentioned about digital healthcare. So we also do run a few hospitals, medical centers, and we are able to do teleconsultation. So especially if, if I, I'm unwell, I just want consultation, I feel not that safe for me to leave my house because I'm still very wary about the environment. I don't have to purposely go to the hospital. It is possible for me to do it remotely. From even the education sector, classes can still be going online. The malls, the e-retailing comes into the picture. Well, I saw from the from the Q and A about this this question that came about. Um, you know, for for more vocational nature such as the construction and quarry what would digital fluency look like? Now, um, I, I would say in Sunway, close to a decade ago, we have started this journey that we call Virtual Design and Construction, VDC. So this digital technology actually allows us to, in inverted commas, build before we physically build. So you, you basically see the virtual model, how it works, first, whether the buildability is okay, whether sequencing, which is the best sequencing approach, 
how would the just in time costing be like if you build using this approach and you know where where would you have your materials coming in where would it be going out so it allows the digital technology allows you to do much much better planning which eventually saves costs from a total business perspective um even if we look further there are also some industries within within this where people call blue collar industries would already be really embracing uh, digital like uh, 3d printing would uh, Industrialized building system, precasting, and three D printing be the next that comes in. So I, I remember reading this article that says, um, you know, coding is likely to be the next category of uh, blue collar, where in the future it is likely to be a lot of people focusing on designing the processes using codes rather than physically getting getting the work because we have machines supporting us as well. So it, it is important for us to continue looking in that direction. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for those insights. And for the uh, participants, please feel free to leave your questions on the Q&A box. And I promise to uh, have the panelists uh, respond to these questions towards the end. Um, right. So please uh, keep them coming. Um, and this is for the audience just to keep you engaged. 90% um, of world's information was created in the last how many years? This comes from IBM research from 2013. Right? Not, not a recent uh, data point by any stretch of imagination. But can you answer this question? 90% of world's information was created in the last how many years? Let's see some answers going on the chat window. All right, so while the answers uh, keep coming and I'll reveal the answer to you in the next section, um, we'll move into the uh, knowing digital uh, part, right? In your organization, uh, what are you doing to get your senior leaders uh, aligned with digital capability building? Uh, is digital getting enough uh, priority? The reason I ask uh, this question is digital end of the day is a transformation process. It's not a small change. It impacts the entire ecosystem. Uh, it calls for a complete upgrade of people's capabilities. A cultural change is uh, needed along with uh, the technology changes that are, um, that, that are happening. So how are you enlisting the help of senior leaders and what are some typical challenges that you face with this? Uh, maybe, uh, Emea, if you want to get started with this question, just to break the order. You can, no problem. Uh, in Roach, actually, we are embracing digital as a second nature. So we are striving to achieve a higher level of digital engagement so that the customer can, can make you know, better decisions faster. So, you know, the purpose on why we have to build a uh, digital capability is very, very clear. Thus, if you ask me, right, not much I have to do to get a buy-in from senior leaders because we are embracing it as a, as a second nature in that sense. So for us, leadership is an enabler for us to achieve digital as a second uh, nature mindset. So. Leaders were required to role model. Uh, when we talk about role model, actually we will expect them to role model in five frequency in that sense, right? How they make decisions and taking action, how you know they reward and recognize others, how they tolerate, you know, what exactly they tolerate and don't tolerate, and how they show up informally and how they communicate, you know, formally in that sense. I think because this is what we are expecting the leaders to be. So basically, no buy-in. So if you ask me whether getting enough priority in the organization, yeah, definitely is top of the list for us. Yeah. Great. Sounds good. And uh, do you see any challenge because of the generation that they belong to, uh, senior leaders and uh, ad adopting technologies could perhaps be a little bit more challenging? Um, do you see any challenge with uh, what they intend to do, the role modeling versus actually what is being practiced? Uh, not really, because we are in the pharma and the healthcare industry. Yes, the generation, but however, all our employees is the doctors, pharmacies, you know, a white collar professional. So it's very quick for them to adapt to this uh, new way of working, I would say. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, Clayton, uh, how does this look in your environment? I would say we're pretty fortunate to have leaders who champions digital transformation. So um, it's, we have quite heavy investment in digital transformations as well. 
Um, but I would like to also debunk this myth that a lot of people may say uh, leaders do not want to change. Leaders do not embrace digital technology. Because I saw one question in the, the Q&A that asked about this. I thought, what do I do with leaders who do not want to um, embrace technology? I, I personally see more from this perspective. Most of the leaders want that change to happen. They know it's required. They want the whole, whole transformation to happen. What is more challenging is actually not the end game. It's the journey to the end game. Everybody wants the end game. Nobody wants the hard work that brings us to the end game. And what if, what if we fail in this transformation? Am I going to take a few steps backward instead? So I'm okay now, but do I want to take the risk of the transformation? So in, in some way, I think we have quite, quite a model that works pretty well for us. Uh, we, we call this the Sunway City Living Lab concept. So we have Sunway iLabs, innovation labs that focus a lot on innovation, digitalization. And there are five verticals that we look at. Um, digital health, the agri-food tech, the smart cities, the e-commerce, the fintech. What, what it works is that we will also work closely with uh, students, grooming students to be potential entrepreneurs. We work with startups. We also work with employees, developing intrapreneurs for them to come up with their ideas and use this as um, case studies, pilot studies. In a way, it is lower risk than saying, okay, now I want this whole business to transform and put aside what you're doing now and we now do it a completely new way. We can start up with a startup doing a new way. And then if this works, now I integrate this technology into my existing business and help it grow. So in that sense, we get a bit of best of both worlds, versatile enough to still move fast enough from this segment and the existing business continue to enjoy the stability that they have. Great, I think that's a great insight, right? The, the ability to manage two different businesses, one your core that could potentially be slower, more stable, versus uh, something new that's going at a fast pace. And how do you manage the two at the same time uh, is an art and a craft by itself. So I see a lot of questions around uh, what I had as my next question. How do you make sure that the digital strategy of the organization is cascaded to various levels within the organization? Right, I see the same question in the Q&A and I had the same one as well. Um, Mr. Raja, would you like to answer that question? Uh, while there may be clarity at a senior leadership level, the importance of digital, how do we cascade that to the entire organization? Um, to me, um, cascading strategy uh, is, is a process in which I tend to agree with uh, Amaya and Clayton, uh, where senior leadership buy-in is very, very important. So, uh, But this is the first step. Uh, the next crucial step is how you improve the optics and also the belief among the employees along the way, along the journey. That is a, a crucial step. People, uh, I, I believe, need to see uh, what next after the senior leadership buy-in. Something tangible. They need to see it. So... Uh, what we did in Aislango, we, we let the employees to see uh, how the company uh, outlined its business strategy uh, by incorporating digital investments into those strategies to transform Aislango into becoming a digital utility by 2030. That's nine years from now. Uh, and I remember in, in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, you know, we, we launched um, IS Lango Digital Drive. Uh, I think Rajiv, one of your colleagues, uh, was there as well uh, yeah. from Nullscape. So it was a very special event uh, organized for nearly six to 700 staff from various employment categories, I mean from the top management down to the meter reader or even the plant assistant. The purpose is just to witness Aislango's journey, Aislango's journey um, in digital drive. So everyone could see uh, how the company stressed the importance of this digital transformation. Uh, it's, it's not all about you know, uh, adopting the latest technology, uh, but involvement is, uh, from people is also key. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, um, everyone plays, plays a part. So, and 
And after that event, uh, they could also, this is how we cascade down to, uh, to the rest of the employees. Uh, they could see that the company had established several supporting uh, strategies throughout the entire uh, value chain of the business activities in the company uh, to ensure execution occurs with specific standards set by the company. So this is how uh, in Aslango we uh, cascade down uh, the overall from the strategy up to the implementation work. Great. I think that's a that's a great response. So if you uh, think about what typically happens, um, it's all great on a PowerPoint slide. The vision Correct. is articulated really well. But the quick wins that we need for people to gain that belief and for the change to gain some momentum, that's, I think, perhaps uh, an important first step. right? And also the communication that needs to go around it and the sustained communication because it's not an overnight process. It, it, it is bound to take some time and you will have some ups and downs in the process. So how do you guide that with organizational structures and cultural practices and the role modeling that we spoke about earlier? All of those need to come in sync, uh, right? They need to be in sync for pushing this forward. I, I found that very um, insightful in your answer. Thank you so much for that. Um, the next uh, set of questions I had um, was around the actual doing. One thing is to raise awareness through communication, through leadership, role modeling, and all of that. The second is actually getting into the doing part. And something that uh, Clayton also mentioned from awareness to adoption, uh, right? And so anything specific uh, that you have done to enable the mindsets of people and, and unless we, our minds are ready, our eyes will not see. And there, there is a famous quote like that, right? Um, so what have you done in terms of mindsets and methodologies in your organization that helps people adopt this faster, right? Uh, have you done something around maybe design thinking uh, right, which um, basically enables you to put the stakeholder right in the center or agile ways of working, database decision making. So these are certain pillars that we hear of usually in the uh, in the digital world. Anything that you have done specifically to address the mindset issue and the methodology issue? Uh, Clayton, you want to go first? Yeah. On this uh, one? All right. So, well, when we talk about cascading just now, we talked a bit about, you know, leadership message. How do we bring it down and make sure everybody embraces it? Uh, the other thing that we think about is also how do we do it as a bottom-up building approach? Great. So yeah. uh, how, how do we do that? Uh, we run hackathons, we run ideation challenges, uh, innovation challenges, idea dropouts. So what we do is um, we put this challenge onto the table, let employees uh, brainstorm, come back with ideas. It's like a mini competition hackathon for them to work on these ideas. And when they come to a somewhat solid idea, is when we also put them through design thinking workshops. So that uh, we, we have sprints to bring them through the ideation and bring it into reality. So um, the important part about this is because as we do this, usually when we kickstart a project, people are excited, but they are ex excited for as long as they still see things happening. So yeah. it is important for them to see what's the end of this? Now that this idea, everybody like it, I became a champion, I want something in this idea. How, how have the management now brought this to life? And when we bring this to life, it might have evolved along the way. How do we communicate back to them that, yeah, this is how we have evolved from the ideas you, you originally had. Um, besides that, we also run this, uh, this program that we call the SR program. Uh, it stands for Eliminate, Simplify, Standardize, Automate. For us to relook at processes within the organization, how do we, you know, if we can eliminate it first, if it cannot be eliminated, then how do we simplify it? Uh, no, if, if not, how do we then standardize? You know, we are, we are a huge organization. How can we standardize so we don't reinvent the wheel too much? And otherwise, how can we leverage on technology and automate it? This will help us very much when it comes to productivity and growth. And once the results are seen in this area, it automatically creates the mentality of wanting to continue going on with more and more such projects. Awesome. I like the structure you have. You have elements of four from awareness all the way to monetization, uh, from eliminate all the way to automate. I really like the structure in your answer. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so... Um, Mr. Raja, would you like to address this as well in terms of uh, mindsets, what specifically um, needs to be done? And this is both from a senior leadership and there's a question on middle managers 
when there is resistance coming from their side how do we overcome that uh as the organization becomes more digital uh employees at all levels will be definitely undergoing a shift uh to adopt these new technologies that's for sure and there are plenty you know some so some of the groups you know you can send some resistance to change uh as such uh, new culture has to kick in immediately uh one one of the three pillars when we after we have launched the digital drive transformation event uh one of the three pillars in islango uh digital drive is to is the establishment of the digital working culture so we are communicating to the employees regardless of where they are you know how how can we build new bridges for future work so everybody needs to see that think how would we go to a certain direction set by the company at the same time uh, some of the processes some of ways of doing things need to be changed so besides migrating uh, from our uh, one of the 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 things that we did you know besides migrating from our old internal based customer information system to to customer empowerment via islango application uh we have also started our digital workplace technology that that further enhance our new e learning platform so people could see uh from this angle where you know uh the company has done so much in terms of uh providing a real experience for the customers where now uh if you are browsing into our our into islango water uh, apps you know you can even know your your current uh, usage you will be able to analyze how much uh, water that you have consumed so we have started this from the external uh, standpoint from the internal we need also to write um right away to to build uh, this skill via our new e learning platforms so it, in the past i saw uh, you know the staff has been exposed with you know a, a, a conventional way of learning system uh, or platform so now after the the digital drive uh, event we have switched to a new e learning platforms so creating this new mindset um, which is open to new technology uh, the needs to be flexible uh and committed to a digital working culture of learning uh, basically we wanted uh to produce an agile workforce as what you mentioned uh, rajiv uh, and again uh, i like to reiterate this you know no no skip has been you know with us from the start of this beautiful journey and i think you are the business partner that you know have been experiencing from day one and we are still learning so uh besides this people element we also uh made a tweak to the existing organizational structure this is just more on to strengthening the optic from from the employee and the mindset of the employees by establishing a new division called data analytics center that help islango uh, optimizing its performance by way of improving our decision making into a more data driven decision making process that's what we did awesome great um so i have two more questions one for becoming digital and the last for being digital um so we spoke about firstly awareness we spoke about mindsets and methodologies that we embrace be it agile or design thinking and other things um when you actually start going beyond individuals and teams and look at it from an org perspective what are those um, things that we've had to change in the organization from a policy standpoint could be as um uh, trivial as let's say your device policy that seems to come in the way of digital culture is is there any case study that you you can talk about in terms of things that has that have worked or not worked from an organizational setting perspective uh clayton would you like to take that well i am um... when when we talk about what work and what does not work i guess it comes from two angle one angle is in the infra the other is the people do we get the infra ready first or do we get the people ready first so i i guess what works pockets of organizations um i would see people 
are able to visualize um, digitalization, visualize the change, wanting to know the end game. Well, to put it bluntly, we all watch science fiction for more than 10, 20 years. You know, it has always been there. So it's not difficult for us to visualize what's going to come next. Now, visualizing is one thing. Believing that that is going to happen is the next thing. Then the third thing is believing that I can make that happen. So th today, um, there may still be quite high dependencies. Um, I Like when I, when I speak to my tech team, the, the technology department, they say, well, there are people who want things, but they will assume that all this belongs to IT. So IT should do all this for me. It is important for us to develop the mindset that says, I can also do that myself. So some of the things that we do is, we put employees into beyond the hackathons, get some fundamental coding exposure because these are things that gets people intimidated if they have not tried it. But when after they have tried it, it's like, you know, it is almost like giving an instruction, just that now this instruction is a bit more rigid. And, and from there, we'll then be able to get, get the different teams to work on their own development themselves, where the technology team becomes an advisor rather than the developer. So this, this is an on, ongoing model that we're trying to evolve towards. Awesome, that's great. Um, Emea, you, would you like to uh, come in on this question in terms of cultural changes you've had to uh, bring in to build digital fluency in your organization? Okay, uh, I would like to say maybe personalized learning curve for digital because as you are aware, I think different people, you know, the level of, uh, you know, the fluency of, of digital is very, very different, right? So, you know, that's why in terms of learning, it needs to be personalized, yeah. And, you know, I, I would say, how can we really understand where our people are in terms of uh, digital learning? And, you know, um, where, where are they going to, you know, get those ability, you know, how are we going to ensure they really comprehend the digital ecosystem, you know, within their role, while we also want to ensure that, you know, we are not happy, happy only internally, we also need to ensure that we are able to provide meaningful uh, digital customer experience that ultimately going to add value to patient in that sense. So the way I look at it, I think our people are more independent, are more self-driven in terms of their learning, in terms of their acquiring their digital knowledge, as well as, you know, the digital application in that sense. With that, in actual fact, then we will be able to really reduce the dependency of the external vendors, uh, you know, and we also trying to embed not trying, actually, we are embedding the digital ambassador in the team in the sense to ensure that every single team they have the digital ambassador uh, to really drive you know, the digital transformation forward. So we have the learning academy. So they will have this type of like digital bite sites learning uh, they are providing. And in terms of content creation, we also have like whether it's the internal content, external content, we have different platform for people to leverage. And in terms of like insight capturing analytics, you know, whether is it a uh, human or digital channel, we also have a system in capturing all this insight. And then, you know, then everybody will know what exactly the insight that we are getting to ensure very consistent. And uh, I, I, you know, yeah, so, so this, is, this is some cultural change that the, the way I look at it that we had to bring in to build really digital frenzy. Important is on people. Just now I heard from, you know, Crenton and Roger highlight a lot. Actually, our people need to seem like they need to learn a lot, right? When it comes to digital transformation. I, I would like to highlight one thing is, I think unlearning is equally important. You know, you cannot keep adding, adding, adding to people, right? And, and you forgot to unlearn. I think how we want to ensure, you know, uh, you know, how we want to ensure people also able to unlearn because what's really helped us to be successful in the past, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that it will help us to be successful in the future, right? It will be very different what is needed for our future. And how are we going to ensure people is able to leave their rough behind? 
and really unlearn those things, then you are able to acquiring, you know, be more open to really, you know, really acquire all these new skills and shifting how we think, how we behave, you know, I think that will be critical for us when, you know, we have to do it with a very conscious intent reflex, reflection and get all those support from our colleagues and for our team. Yeah. Great. Uh, sounds good, Emea. So I think uh, one, empty the teacup, right? And uh, unlearning is equally important, uh, not just learning. I think that's a, a good uh, insight right there. And I liked what you said about empowering learning for others, uh, right? Personalized learning that too. And uh, developing um, a pool of champions in every team, right? As you are cascading your digital transformation initiatives, there needs to be at least a critical mass of people who get it, right? And who are able to cascade that further to their organizations. We need enough believers in the system to uh, basically take this uh, message forward. So I really like what you said there. Um, last question before we open up to the Q&A and there are a bunch of questions on the, uh, the Q&A panel. Uh, in fact, it's a two-part question. How do you make the change stick, right? All the changes that you've introduced over the last couple of years, how do you make all of the, these changes stick? That's one. Second, if you had a magic wand today, what would you wish for, for the success of digital transformation? And uh, the research around this is uh, quite sobering. They say only 30% of all digital transformation initiatives actually succeed, right? Uh, given that uh, statistic, what is that one thing you would wish for with your magic wand? So two parts to this question, how do you make the chain stick and what would you wish for with your magic wand? Clayton? Well, um, to make the change stick, it, it evolves around mini series, bite-sized, consistent, um, ecosystem built around this. So when I say ecosystem, it means, you know, there, there isn't one thing that can make, make things stick. Not a big bang event, not just the management, not just the people wanting it, but creating a platform, a platform where people can discuss and share ideas. Um, an example that I can share here is in Sunway, we have this um, 42 KL where it is a, a coding school, a tech school, where it revolves a lot around uh, peer-driven learning. So uh, learning, learning from peers, guiding one another rather than lecturers downloading. And that actually helps people to create the initiative of saying, I can do it myself. Well, we are bringing that same model to see you know, how can we get employees into it as well so that there's a peer learning, there is a I want it, there is an ecosystem around it, and then very little reinforcement. Uh, recognizing that digital is not flavor of the year, uh, not flavor of the month. It is not, I want to do something and therefore a big carnival around it. And now this month we talk about digital. It is about let's put a little reinforcement every week, every month to make sure everybody remembers we are on this journey together. It's a marathon. It is not an overnight change. This will give good assurance for, for everyone to say, um, you know, this, this is something I consistently do. But if I have a magic wand, what would I do? Um, I wish the, the digital education of the country as a whole, the society as a whole, can, can be improved further. Take with the understanding that digital is just as important as a language today. Uh, it, is, it is not soft skill. It is not technical skills. It is an essential skill. How do we assimilate all this to the you know, usual life skill development of people. Great, awesome. I think I, I love what you just said. Um, Emea, what, uh, what would you do with your magic wand and how do you make all of this uh, chain stick? <laughs> I think, you know, Clinton talked a little bit more about technology and infrastructure. How are we going to get it ready? I will go in from the mindset side. I would say, you know, mindset, will be translate into the change in behavior. I think how people are going to change in behavior, that going to determine whether are we going to be successful in our digital transformation or not. Not just digital transformation, any of the transformation, right? And, and to make the mindset shift, you know, I, I, that is more about, you know, a positive and proactive learning about those behavior how are our people really able to do that? A little bit more conscious uh, 
when they are driving it. So if you ask me if I really going to have magic stick, I do hope that I'm ting. Everyone my shirt is already <laughs> put a false name one and we are, you know, everyone think very differently and we are done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk is working on that idea. It's called Neural Link. We'll all have a chip in our head and we'll all be upgraded to the next level. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and, and Mr. Raja, how do you view this one? How do you make this change taken? What, what would you do with your magic wand? <laughs> uh, I think how do I make the change take is, I think, being, being a leader in the organization. Uh, it is not so much about people managers is being a leader in an organization. You must be uh, the exemplar. You must set the tone. Uh, you, and you must act like uh, one with speed and walk the talk. So this need, need to, be, to be seen uh, by all employees. And uh, as leaders, I think you must also, it, it's not so much about delivering uh, KPIs whether you know we could achieve certain targets they are important but as leaders we must also inspire people um, to have a stamina to learn new skills and also habits because the moment you are talking about digital transformation and how it evolves over certain period uh, we have to continuously learn like what Mia said, you know, we have to unlearn as well. And uh, my third one would be, you know, um, could be an unpopular approach, um, but it had to be done. Nevertheless, uh, we must never compromise on performance. Um, we must make sure that every single one in the company uh, plays a vital part uh, in, the, in the change process and make it work. Uh, yeah. that's, that's very important. And because, again, you know, everyone must believe in the process and deliver up to, you know, uh, what uh, we expect to do, expected to do as, as a team. My, my wish list, uh, number one is I, I tend to have a similar wavelength as me. Uh, you know, um, I just have, you know, one stick and I just want a, a collective uh, mindset and everybody will be, on the same page with regards to digital transformation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will we'll wait for technology to evolve on that front. <laughs> uh, interesting questions on the chat window. Um, so the, the, there's one question. Panelist Raja Ahmed spoke about aligning business strategy to digital strategy. Does that mean that digital fluency as a metric can be related to other growth metrics? Anything that you are uh, constructing as a KRA or a KPI to ensure that you know digital readiness is measured and that you can connect to business growth as well. This question is for uh, Raja. Uh, you're on mute. Okay, in terms, uh, there, are number of ways, there are a number of ways to uh, measure digital fluency. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, I view digital fluency as a skill. So, so you don't know where to, if you don't know where to start, the best way is to get a clearer picture of where your current skill level is. Uh, that is to, to determine where, where your baseline is. Uh, so this can be done via the application of some assessment like you know quizzes or practical exams during any intervention programs related to digital fluency. Uh, I think one of ways that we did in, in Ais Lango, I think we, we also measure with uh, a gamification approach. Uh, so it, it is one of the good examples incorporating gaming elements into a serious course content. Uh, and also providing uh, a small rewards for the winners. Uh, so I've been exploring this approach and uh, for the first time, I think I've experienced it quite well, you know, when we uh, did a work with Nullskip. And uh, more so, I think right now, uh, in Aislango, um, Gen Y and Z are the dominant population. And bear in mind, you know, by, by the year 2025, there will be nearly 2 billion members of Gen or generation alpha, they call it, will exist across the globe. So 
So gamification is you know one of the ways uh, you can engage the employees uh, and at this at the same time also get some measurement of what your current level is. Uh, an employee survey on digital skills indicator will also be another execution tool or another tool that you know we can consider to to gauge our our digital fluency. Of course, in Aisano, I haven't really explored um, this approach. But we we are exploring now, and we are also considering to to incorporate uh, digital fluency as part of Icelandic leadership competency framework. For example, you know, for certain position, um, need certain level of competencies required depending on specific role. Uh, so that's that's my answer, uh, Rajiv. Awesome, quite comprehensive. Thank you so much. Uh, a quick um, question for all of you, in fact, um, there's a question, are there examples of global firms who have succeeded, uh, who have successfully adopted digital and benefited and not suffered as a result? Interesting question. I want to flip this around and ask uh, about your uh, role model as an organization. Who do you benchmark against? When you think about your own journey, is there a, a company that you aspire to be from a digital standpoint, Clayton? Well, a very short answer to that is no. I, I, at this point, I can't think about an organization that we model ourselves against, but it's probably more modeling against the visual end game that we have. Okay. Because we always have to say, you know, begin with the end in mind. What is the end yeah. game we want? What do we really want to see? And then using that, we can then model ourselves against it. Now, take, take an example, if we want digital fluency to be measured as a matrix, uh, my, my thought around that is, well, metrics alone requires digital fluency for it to be real. So I'm not measuring digital fluency, but I'm probably measuring how real are my metrics because digital fluency allows me to collect data that is more real than what I'm probably collecting today. So Absolutely. improving on that makes a lot of sense. Great point. And then data, end of the day, is the lifeblood of digital. If we don't know what to do with that data, then we've lost the game. That's a good one. Um, Emir, is there an organization that you consider as your sort of a role model for uh, digital? Maybe from an HR standpoint, right? Who do you consider as um, among the best? I, I won't. I, I don't really have that as well. It is because of, I think, a lot of very forefront digital organization is not really in a healthcare or the pharma industry. Sure. So, uh, you know, and in terms of the transformation, I think Roche is quite for, you know, we are quite forefront in that sense, right? And for us, we are not really looking in, you know, we, we, we wouldn't want to use the words maybe KPI to really measure as such. I think more on signaling, right? What exactly the signal we are trying to sense where we are and whether are we moving towards the, the right direction? As I highlight just now, I think, you know, uh, digital is our second nature. So for us, what we are trying to achieve is when we talk about our engagement approach, right? How can we use, or how can we be being digital in our engagement? You know, how can we leverage that? And how are, can we, how are we going to integrate digital seamlessly, right? In the omni-channel engagement. And, you know, and, and for, for me, I think it's more on, definitely one of it is being digital insight driven in that sense. And how are we going to be able to have those, right? To ensure we are always able to ensure customer channel centric uh, uh, approach being, being provided as well as, you know, I think importantly also, how are we going to ensure or understand when we, when to use which digital tools, right? And for what purpose? I think that will be critical, right? You know, I think at the moment we, we are not there yet in that sense. That is what ultimately we wanted. And now it's more on signaling. And I, I would say that your internal readiness, it doesn't mean that your external is also ready, right? You know, and, and when we assess the internal readiness, we also need to assess the external also ready. You can be very, very forefront, but however, if your external, your customer, your patient just unable to mm. accept that, your forefront actually is, is mean nothing, right? Very important yeah. is what exactly you want to make the difference to the external customer and the, and the healthcare ecosystem out there. Yeah. Awesome. So, so I think thinking ecosystem, I, I think is 
something common that all of you spoke about that I'm taking away. Data is uh, common. Agility is common also. How you know rapidly can we do this? Now, we have, we've run out of time, but I just want to end this with one something personal that you want to share. How do you keep up personally? How, what is your method for learning and staying on top of all of these changes for yourself to be digitally fluent? Just a one-liner. What, what is your top source of keeping up? Clayton? Well, I, I'm just generally curious about technology. So <laughs> it's that curiosity that just makes me read at different places on what are, what's all available out there and hands-on experiment it, you know, even if you say, yeah, this coding seems good, why not? Let's open up. Well, I, I had the advantage of coming from the tech background myself in the past. Awesome. So, so do it yeah, yourself. That, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that will feed my curiosity and get me going. Awesome. Um, Mr. Raja, how, how do you keep up with all the changes that are going on? What is your secret sauce for uh, digital fluency for yourself? I, I think the, the willingness um, to learn new things. Uh, we must never stop learning. And of course, you know, we must keep ourselves fit all the time. Yes. And Emea, um, how do you keep yourself digitally fit? Be curious. And, you know, be curious and willing to explore and, and involve uh, experimenting on what we, are, we, we felt is right. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, panelists, for all your awesome insights. I hope we were able to do justice to all the questions on the uh, uh, chat. And I asked you a question about 90% of world's information. Uh, it was created in the last two years, right? But this data comes from 2013, which I believe is outdated already. If, if they did the research today, maybe they'll discover that it's only 15 months or 12 months. So that's uh, uh, the age that we live in. Uh, thank you so much, panelists, for your time and your valuable insights and participants. Thank you so much for your attendance as well. And uh, yeah, once again, stay safe. Uh, take care of yourself and your families. And uh, thank you for this.